jump in three, in two. And welcome to You Have Real Estate with me, attorney Justin Clark. Whether you're a first time home buyer, seasoned investor, or even looking to sell your home, this next 30 minutes is designed just for you. Think of like hitting multiple open houses, all from your living room, but with my attorney advice throughout the way. Any questions whatsoever, we have people standing by to answer them. All you have to do is call the phone number on the screen, 407 205 zero four zero zero i promise you we will not want to miss one single second of today's show it's going to be a great one but first the opening statement the opening statement today is brought to you by my good buddy stephen bader the coo of iq power solar as you know they saved me over 300 dollars a month last year on my electric bill but also at the end of the year i saved ten thousand dollars on my irs bill all because i went solar great news for you the government has extended the tax credit for solar. Steve, how did you save me so much money? I know that you want to buy a house. I don't blame you. When you buy a house right now with interest rates at 2 2.5%, you are always going to pay less for your mortgage than you would to rent the same house. I totally agree. I know that the market's up a little bit here, but I think it's still a fantastic time to buy a home. But the question's going to arise. Do you buy a house that's already in existence or do you buy a house new from a builder? And it's a great question. And it's a question that maybe is unanswerable, but we're going to do our best to answer that and tell you whether you buy a house new or used. And we're going to do that by asking real questions every Saturday here on You Have Real Estate. I ask real questions to the truly trend-setting people in Central Florida's real estate community. Today on the show, it's a full show I'm pleased to welcome Rose Kemp, J.R. Kroll, Holly Kroll, and Kara Moore. Also, Eric Mock will check in from a builder's community to show you what's really going on down there in these new home communities. Let me start here with Rose and J.R. Guys, welcome back. How are you? Doing great. Good Thank you. J.R., let me start with you because I don't think I've seen you since the election. Last time you were here, I think the election was coming up. You were victorious and you're now the Seminole County tax collector. Congrats, yep. how do you yeah, feel? Thank you. Oh, it feels great. I mean, really, really excited to be there. Um, getting a lot of stuff done, uh, a lot of cleanup, you know, that we had to do since we got in there, but, um, you know, I definitely enjoy the challenge and I think there's gonna be a lot, a lot of good things coming through Seminole County. The obvious and most important question, obviously for anyone who just got elected tax collector is, do you have your picture up in every building already? No. <laughs> oh no! Come on, that's the main thing. It's a, yeah, I, I got one up at uh, Sanford. That's about it. We, we well, have, there's a lot of marketing that goes into it. Um, you know, we really just took office for you know I just took office on January 5th, but um, I've been working there since November 4th. Um, you know, trying to get everything cleaned up and get hit the ground running. So it's a uh, it's been a lot of it. We got the new logos up, but we're still working on getting the branding done on all the buildings and stuff to rebrand it. I think that's the only reason I would run for office is to get my picture <laughs> in all the buildings. You know, but anyway. Not only are you there, not only did you start in November, you went there and worked for free to try to clean up things. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but I want you to know at home that, that this man went in and worked for free to try to get uh, that tax collector's office up and running. Uh, wasn't paid. So thank you for that. To all the people oh, yeah. in Seminole County, thank kind of you. Necessary, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know there were you know, a lot of things that, that really had to be done and had to be changed, but how have you now... You were a realtor before, real estate agent before, and now you're going into a, a physical location every day. How have you handled that transition? Because being a real estate agent, obviously, you're working for yourself. You're working from home a lot. Now you're in the office every day. How's that transition gone? Well, I mean, being in real estate, I mean, most realtors know you would be, you're always going to die. You're not going to be successful. So, I mean, my thing, same now, I'm doing the same thing I did when I was in real estate as I do with this. I wake up in the morning, I check my calendar, and I say, what am, what am I getting get done today? Um, so now, of course, it's a whole different ball game of what I'm what I'm going to have to get done in the day, and I have lots of other people putting things on my schedule. But um, other than that, we just you know I just really want to make sure we have everything going smoothly in Seminole County. Um, I, I always tell people I liken the tax collector's office to similar similar to being a, a title company. Mm. Like people think you actually are the one collecting the taxes, and I'm like, well, we don't we don't make the numbers, we don't calculate that, we don't do the, uh, the values of the homes. That's done through the the county commission appraiser we just literally collect it like the check goes through us and we're holding until we redistribute i think a lot of people think about the tax collector's office much like and no offense going to the dentist i mean you know yeah. we, we don't want to go renew our license we don't want to wait in that line for hours it, it it really is something that people think of as a terrible experience often 
what is it like at your office? How long does it take me to wait in line? And what do I do there? Do I go there for my license, for my real? What, what do I what do I do at your office and how long does it take? Well, we do everything in the office. We're just the agent. The tax collector in Seminole County works as the agent for other d departments. So we're going to do things for like you can do birth certificates. You can do concealed weapon permits, um, driver's licenses, t registrations. All those things can be done at our office. Um, and, and like I said, when uh, a normally with without COVID, we were having shorter. We can get shorter wait times going on. But um, now, luckily, kind of one of the benefits of COVID that happened was that people started realizing they can do a lot of these services online for renewal so they're not gonna they're not coming and clogging the office and realizing so i'm hoping if that stays that was going to make things a lot more efficient for the people of seminole county sure um so yeah back now to a, a full-time day job that you have but managing what 120 people i think over there how uh, how have you adjusted to this management role well, I mean, I departmentalize it. I mean, I, I, you know, if you really, it'd be a little overwhelming if you said I have to, you know, manage 120 people. That's that that'd be overwhelming for anyone. But you know, what you do, you're going to do is we have, you know, six offices, we have six managers. So you're managing, I'm managing the managers, and they're managing the, their each office individually. Because typical office can have anywhere from, you know, we have a smallest office that has like four employees. Do we have one that has you know over 20? So it just depends on the office. Yeah, when you get home to your wife now, are you more like chest out when you roll in the house? Like I'm an elected <laughs> official now. Does she treat you better now, or what's she, different? She doesn't at home? call me. She doesn't call me the honorable. No. <laughs> are you serious? Uh, no. She worry, maybe she's coming on after this. I'll talk to her about that. Uh, but Rose, like I was, welcome back, Rose. It's good to see you, you, by the way. Like I was talking with Jr. Jr. was a, a great agent before. Now he's in the office. To be a real estate agent, I think some people think, wow, you don't have to work that hard. You know, go show a few houses on Saturday. You take the rest of the week off. I mean, in the trenches to be a successful realtor, what sort of hours do you put in? What's your week like? Wow. Okay. Well, every week is different. Every single day is different. Um, my days typically start pretty much the moment I get up to text messages and phone calls and emails. And I basically pivot around all day long. And no matter what schedule I have, there's always going to be additional tasks and things that I might have to attend to and turn into a priority throughout the day. Uh, what time does my, I mean, I always say real estate is the beast that never sleeps, especially here in Orlando, because we have people that buy from everywhere, from all over the world, and they're all on different time zones. So I'm busy all the time. <laughs> I don't and have a set schedule. <laughs> and every great agent that I know or successful agent that I know, it's the same thing. It's 24 hours, your phone's on 24 hours mm -hmm. a day. Constant work is what it really is. It never yeah. really ends. So we accommodate people and, you know, we are working with people on, you know, their livelihood. So, you know, we do have um, a responsibility there to, you know, treat them the way I would want to be treated, obviously. And again, with people being in different time zones, some people working, I mean, you know, sometimes right now it gets dark early. Yeah. So it's kind of tough. People get off work at five, six o'clock and I'm out there showing houses at night <laughs> so when we started the show I, I promised that i would tell you whether you should buy a house that is brand new or buy a house that's used so to speak and you hear about used and new in the car world oh i bought a new car or oh i bought a used car or i will only buy a used car because you lose 20 percent as soon as you drive the new car off the lot you don't hear people talk about housing in those same ways but it, but it's true you can buy a new house or you can buy a used house when you're working with a buyer do you recommend one or the other and what goes into that decision making process? Um, I do. And that always typically comes based on location. So based on the location that they're interested in living in, if there is uh, some new home communities, I'm obviously going to go ahead and present that as well as an opportunity. So, um, you know, in some cases it works out for people and it's great. I mean, new construction, who doesn't like new construction? move in ready it smells brand new it feels brand new new community um, and then you have your resales and actually some people do prefer a resale because they want a community that's already established they want the the trees they want certain areas that you wouldn't have a new home and that's you know that's your only option you know my fear sometimes is and i know what it's like especially if you're in the market for a house you're you know spending sunday with your family you had a nice lunch you're driving down the street you see this new neighborhood with all the flags you say you know what i'm just gonna stop in I don't need my agent to go with me. I'm just going to stop in myself. And you get there and there's a nice gal or, or guy at the, the sales desk there. And they might give you a hot dog, maybe a Pepsi for free. And, and you fall in love because obviously that model home is going to be perfect. You're going to fall in love. But I need you to be a little bit careful about something. 
that person at the sales desk is not working for you as nice as they may be, as pretty as she may be, as attractive as he may be. Keep in mind who pays their paycheck. It is the builder. Rose, I'm going to go buy a new house from one of these new developments. Should I take my agent with me and how much extra does that cost? Uh, it's not going to cost you anything to have representation and I highly, highly recommend representation because as a realtor I know that I have personally been able to uh, negotiate um, you know different components of a contract basically uh, closing costs incentives so there's you know there's a lot of things that we have to look at with new construction also timelines so you have somebody there holding your hand and guiding you through that process and that's extremely valuable and it doesn't cost you anything because the builder is the one essentially paying out mm -hmm. the uh, commissions. Uh, Seminole County Tax Collector J.R. Crow, let me ask you a question too about the new homes, the new development. So back when you were doing real estate full time, uh, you worked with a lot of buyers, of course, who bought new homes. And then you roll into this development and they say, oh, this house will cost $250,000. Is that two fifty? dollars I'm just using that as an example. Is that two fifty dollars for everything or is that for the stud, so to speak? I got to pay extra for the cabinetry. How does that work when you're buying a new home from that developer? Well, most, most developers do. I mean, there are like... Lennar that was doing like everything included in there, but they would, you know, they wouldn't give you as many choices, but then you have other builders like KB that will give you lots of choices. They'll start very basic and move their way up. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, obviously the base price is going to be the starting and then you can just do all your add ons. Yeah. Um, even regarding to, even with taxes, a lot of them have stopped doing this. Thank God. Cause they used to have back in the day you would have where you'd buy a property and your taxes are only you know, five hundred dollars, and you're right. like, "Wow, this is great taxes for this place." <laughs> yeah. You know, and then your first tax Wait bill comes. <laughs> it gets it's on raw land, and now you're assessed on a on a you know five hundred thousand dollar house. <laughs> it's a big right. it's a big change. But most builders have stopped doing that. I think now they've they realize because they too many people got burned on it. But right. they did it they did it for a long time. I think the moral of the story is: look, you can buy the new house, and sometimes that's the way to go. Some people, some of us, don't have a great vision when we go in a house that might need some work. We can't visualize that being our home. But when you walk into this brand new house, it smells great. You don't need a vision because the vision is already there right in front of you. I get it. I think it's really the buyer. It's really, it really comes down to your family, what's best for you. Uh, but I know that, and I called it used homes earlier. Let's call it resale. resale. I think that's a much better word for yes. it. You have a couple houses here, Rose, to show us that are resale homes. I'd like to check these out. Let's start here at uh, Prince Harry Drive. Where is this one, Rose? So that is actually located in Royal Estates over by the Disney area. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can actually see the Disney fireworks from oh. the backyard, which is really, really nice. Um, and it has water view. It's a wonderful community. Um, this particular home is a four bedroom, two and a half bath, and nearly 3,000 square feet with a three car garage, actually. That's so a it's home. deceiving because it looks like a two car garage from the front. But yeah. when you go in, there's actually a whole another lip on the back end, which my current seller has it as a gym. Oh, That's pretty cool. I could so, use one of those if you know what I'm saying. So this particular home also has. Um, all of the bedrooms upstairs so it has kind of a different floor plan than many of the other homes uh, and again if you're looking to live near Disney this is just a great great location and I hate to keep harping on this though but at 535 price point with rates yes. where they are now all right 5, 16 2100 a month maybe PITI mm -hmm. whereas if you were to go rent this house you're at three grand easy I think mm -hmm. for a house of this size Absolutely. so just because you see a number that looks high to you when you really need to do the math, look at the current rates and what your payment's gonna be. We're not buying 535,000 guys. We're buying what our payment is monthly. And with the rates where they are, you can afford a $535,000 house if you can afford 2,100 a month. Then I'm guessing, but somewhere right around 2,100 will be your payment, P-I-T-I, which is is crazy. So get it, please, if, yeah. you're, if you're renting right now, it is time to get in this market. I have no doubt about it. Uh, another property here, 2480 Double Tree. Where is this one? Yes, yeah, so this particular home is in Live Oak um, over in Oviedo, and it actually just hit the market. So it is brand spanking new wow. listing. It's a single story home. Um, I am basically asking 445000 That's what it's listed for. Uh, it is four bedroom, three bathroom home with a two car garage. And it's moving ready. It's absolutely beautiful on the inside. It's got wood floors, great floor plan, great front elevation, and uh, ready to go. So for a quick closing, move in ready. And that area, you know, that 
particular community offers a lot of amenities, uh, and we have a lot of families that move into the Oviedo area, Seminole County, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because of the school districts as well. So highly sought out uh, community. I've said it a thousand times, Oviedo is a fantastic place, especially if you have uh, young kids, because no reason to pay for private school in Oviedo. Schools there are great. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to see these properties, I'll connect you with Rose right now. It's very simple. Call 407-205-0400. Time flew by, Rose. Thanks, yeah. man. Thank you for coming. Yes, Excellent thank job. thank you for having me here. Uh, those are great homes, too. Seriously, if you'd like to see them, she will show them to you this weekend. Call that number, 407-205-0400. Zero zero Rose Kemp, J.R. Kroll, congrats, buddy. Thank you. Thank Can, you. One favor, though. <laughs> my driver's license picture, my face was like fat. Can you, like, airbrush the pictures or anything? <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm getting embarrassed when I have to show someone my Just license. Come in, we'll see if we can get a new picture. I, mean, I, I figured that would be day one, man, when you got, a, when you got appointed there. Uh, good job. Congratulations. Uh, you. hey, you're doing a great job yeah, over there. J.R. Kroll, Rose Kemp. We're going to take a very quick break. But on the way out, I wanted to give you a tour. One of these developer units and who better to take a tour with us than our good buddy and agent to the stars eric mock eric show me this new house uh quick break we'll be right back you have real estate rolls on
Hey, welcome back to the You Have Real Estate Saturday show. Happy to be joined by return visiting guest, Holly Kroll. Hi, Holly. How are you? Hi, Justin. Good to see you. And first time with me, but certainly yes. not first time on TV. <laughs> it is Kara Moore. Hi, how are you? Hi, good. Happy to be here. Used Thank to be you. be on uh, another station here in town for a while. If yes. the face looks familiar, she was on TV in this yeah. town for <laughs> many, many years. It's Holly, let me start with you. Uh, we talked about it. Uh, not used uh, resale home versus resale. new home. Do you have a preference? Um, well, it, uh, I think just like another um, agent has mentioned before, it really location, what they're looking for. Um, there's certainly buyers out there that only want a new home, and it's exciting to buy a new home. And um, it's it's great that we have a lot of that option here in the area, but I don't have a preference. <laughs> a lot of new homes going up. No, no question about it. We see developments going up all over Central Florida. When you go there with a buyer and they say the house is 300000 can we negotiate or what what can we negotiate at that point it's really tough to negotiate price because they're they've got a set price and that will change the price to other buyers so what you negotiate are things like closing costs and options and you know th those sort of things and coming with an agent really does help that i just helped a couple just recently i got them a refrigerator I got them um, some closing costs, and I got them a screened-in patio. So none of that they would have received if they yeah. just walked in, you know, alone without an agent representing them. And it costs you nothing. Again, to have your own agent costs zero dollars. So it only makes sense to have someone representing you. And and look, she Holly tried to kind of tell you, but I'm going to tell you exactly how it works. When you go to one of these developments, if they say the price is three hundred thousand, the price is three hundred thousand, because they don't want the next guy saying, oh, this guy got it for two fifty. If they say three hundred thousand, the price is three hundred thousand. They'd rather give you two hundred thousand dollars worth of free stuff, but they need to keep the prices high. That's just how it works. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they want to keep the prices high for the appraisals that come along later. Mm -hmm. But they'll give you free stuff. I mean, almost every time you'll see them give you free things. They just want that sales price to be what it is. And I think it's. I really think it comes down to the human being or the family themselves. And you can almost tell if they're a. Uh, a fixer upper type family or they want something new they don't have time to go in and, and do any repairs or cosmetic work to their house so i think it's a preference thing i think that there are deals to be had through developers i think there are deals to be had through resales it really just comes down to your preference but whatever you do you need to take your own agent with you because it costs nothing speaking of resale and oviedo i love oviedo uh, most people that i know who have lived in oviedo even if they're moving, they want to stay in Oviedo is what I've always mm -hmm. found. And you have a house to show me here, Holly, on McKinnon Avenue in Oviedo. Tell me about this. I do. And actually, this one gets on the market today. So as soon oh, as wow. I leave here, we will make it active. Um, the, it's priced at three hundred and twenty-four nine, so a great first-time home buyer price. It's a three-two with a pool. It's in the Alfea Woods community. Everybody in Oviedo is a f yeah. uh, familiar with that community. It's got vaulted ceilings in the great room and the dining room, so it's really open. Um, the fireplace is a stack stone tiled wood burning fireplace, really, really pretty. Has an eating kitchen that's been remodeled with uh, black stainless steel appliances that are three years new. The master bedroom views the pool. Both the master bathroom and the guest bathroom have been remodeled. There are laminate and tile floors throughout, so no carpet. It's perfect for the buyer with allergies or pets or kids. The lanai is screened in. The pool uses a salt chlorinating system, so a lot of people really like a salt versus a chlorine system. AC is new. The roof's been replaced just a few years ago, so this house is ready to go. All the big maintenance stuff's been taken care of. And like I said, in Alafaya Woods, you've got parks, basketball, and tennis courts, and of course, zoned in those A-rated Seminole County schools. Beautiful place. Kara Moore, let me bring you in here. Transition from a TV host to real estate. How'd that happen? I know. <laughs> I know. It sounds so strange. No, no, no. Right? It's, it's happened many times. Think about the Lee Goldbergs, the Gary Coles. We know a lot of people who've gone from TV to real estate. The Caramores. The Caramores yes, of right. the world. Absolutely. How'd that happen? How'd you make that decision? You know, uh, it was a, really based on family. I had yeah. small children and I wanted something that was a little more family friendly absolutely. in terms of a career. And uh, I'd always been interested in real estate and uh, friends with Holly and JR. So it yeah. really just everything sort of worked out.
for and, me. And speaking of real estate, you have yes. a great house here to show us as well. This is Hawk's Hammock. Where is that? Yeah, so that's the preserve at Astor Farms oh, in yes. Sanford. It's off of 46. Great area. Great schools. Uh, it's a gated community. The house really has an amazing flow. There's six bedrooms, three bathrooms, uh, 3,500 square feet of space. So you have a lot of space. It's a split floor plan. So the master's off to one side. Gives right. you a lot of good privacy, if, especially if you have young kids. You can so. kind of tuck them away on the other <laughs> side. Uh, bye bye. Yeah, see ya. Have Go up to evening. the playroom. That <laughs> bonus room could be an extra bedroom. It could be yeah. a playroom. Um, you know, it, the the house has one of my favorite features, which is the amazing water views that you can see from that aerial shot there. Um, you can see from all the rooms in the house. Oh, yeah. And a really large tiled lanai. That's new. The roof is new. AC system's new. Painted inside, brand new. So um, I, I think people are really going to love it. A beautiful home. Absolutely beautiful. And, and no neighbors behind you either, from what I can tell, which no, makes a big difference. It does, because a lot of homes here in, in Florida, you, you really feel like you can you kind of can reach out and touch your neighbor right. <laughs> from next door. And this doesn't have that. You even have room if you wanted to put in a pool. You could certainly do that. Big oh, lot. If so you have great. questions, you would like to see these properties, I will connect you with Kara and Holly right now. 407-205-0400. Thank you to all of my guests today. Rose Kemp, J.R. Kroll, Eric, great job on that tour for us. Uh, Kara, great to meet you. Great Thank you. Job, nice to meet you. Let's do this again. How's that? Yes, absolutely. Holly, you crushed it as always. Right. Thank you, thank my dear. You. <laughs> Most importantly, thank you for joining us here today. If you have any questions whatsoever or you want to show your house on our show, we'd be happy to do that for you. Same phone number, 407-205-0400. I'm attorney Justin Clark. We'll see you next week for You Have Real Estate.